Aloha, my name is Candacy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I want to share a brief story with you today. Uh, when I first began studying the law of assumption, I took on an informal mentor. And this person, to this day, probably has no idea that I considered him a mentor, but I absolutely did. And I want to share with you what it was like to interact with him initially and what he taught me, essentially. So when I first began interacting with him, I would send him these really long winded stories. And the stories were often stories just explaining how I got to where I was at, right? And so I would, you know, type up this long story, long backstory of my problem at the time, right? And I would say, well, this is how it, it, it came to be. Like, this is everything that, that took place to kind of get me to, to this point. Uh, and so I would send him this backstory. And then I'd often ask him questions like, why? You know, why did this happen like this? Or why is that like that? you know, why, why, and then this backstory, right? And no matter what I sent to him, no matter how long it was, no matter what, <laughs> he would always reply with the same response. And it was, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Okay, so what do you want? <laughs> And it used to drive me nuts because I'm like, I just sent you like a, a full on like uh, autobiography of my life, <laughs> you know, explaining like how I got to, to this point and this and that. And, and all you have to say is, what do you want? And that was it every time. What do you want? Okay, so so what do you want? And you know, initially it's it's a little jarring, right? When somebody's like, what do you want? And you're, you know, you, you're expecting them to kind of explore the story with you and, uh, you know, kind of break it down with you. You're like, oh, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna explore this with me and really tell me why, you know, things are the way that they are and all of this. And no, he was just, what do you want? What do you want? And that was a tremendous gift. It was a tremendous gift to me and now I am passing it on <laughs> because what this does, when we ask the question, what do I want, right? What that does is that gets you out of the old state. It gets you out of this uh, tendency to tell this story, this backstory of, well, this is how things came to be. And it, it, it just stops you from continuing with that story. It really allows you to let that story go. Um, and it, it's a really beautiful thing to do that because the quicker you can let go of that story, the quicker you can move into your ideal state. And so I tremendously appreciate that this individual would just, he just wouldn't even entertain the backstory. He's just, what do you want? You know, what do you want? What do you want? And so this is a gift and it's a gift to to start adopting and practicing in your life if you're not already doing it is the minute you start to feel yourself wanting to go into the old story go into the old narrative of well this is how things got to be the way that they are the minute you start to feel yourself explaining your problem or the thing that's bothering you the thing that you want to leave behind the minute you start to feel yourself wanting to explain that or justify that or go into more detail about that i actually invite you to stop to pause and then ask yourself well what do i want like what do i want what is my end here what is my end what do i actually want and that question just it just disrupts the pattern of continuing down this this story that is no longer helpful it's no longer serving you and so what do you what do you want what do I want right asking that question and then following it up with another question so once you 
once you identify what you want, then going into the next question is, okay, so what is it like? What is the feeling like if it's true? If it is true that I now have this thing, right? That I am now it, what is the feeling like? What implies that it is true, right? And those are really the only questions that we really need to ask when it comes to manifesting is what do I want and what is the feeling like? If it's true, what is the feeling like? What implies that it's true? What implies that I am the person who already has this thing, right? Those are really the only questions that we need to ask when it comes to manifesting. And trust me, I know I, trust me. I know the desire to want to know, uh, like, well, why or like, you know, let me let me give you this story about all of all of all of how it came to be. I I was the queen of that at one point, especially because of my background. I studied psychology, and in psychology, that's the whole thing, is go back to the past and really analyze it and get in there and really look at all the things going on. So for me, it was like mind-blowing that, wait a minute, we don't have to like go back in there real deep and like really explore all the, you know, all the crevices of my past. (laughs) That was like shocking to me. And so I do understand the uh, initial kind of tendency to want to really explore um, the past and the the story, right, of, of how things came to be. But it is a tremendous gift to simply ask yourself, what do I want? What do I want? And really getting very clear about that. What do I want? And then what is the feeling like, right? If it's true, what is the feeling like? And then what implies that it's true? What implies that I am already the one who has it? And it just is a tremendous gift to go straight to what do you want? What is the feeling like? It just allows you to bypass this uh, tendency to get stuck. Because the minute we start to bring up the past story, the minute we start to uh, really go down the the um, spiral of why, well, why this, why that, that's when we start to get stuck. We start to get stuck in our old state and to be released from that old state, to shift out of that old state, it really is a matter of asking, what do I want and what implies that it is true? What is the feeling like? if it is true. Uh, and that's that's essentially it. And I know how simple it sounds. I know that it, it can sometimes be a little jarring, but you will do yourself a huge favor by getting into the practice of just going straight to what do I want? What implies that it's true? What is the feeling like? And that's it. And so I wanted to share that experience with you because it it completely changed my world. <laughs> it completely changed my world. And then later on, I even found out that that's exactly what Neville would do. So when people would come to him and they would ask him to imagine for, for them, uh, he would notice that they would often like give a backstory. And he would say, I, I actually don't care what got you to this point or what you did do or what you didn't do. I I actually don't care about that. I just want to know what do you want? What do you want? That's all I want to know. And that was Neville's approach when people uh, were asking him to imagine for them. And so it really is a practice to get into the habit of just going straight to what do I want? What do I want? So the minute you notice yourself wanting to go down the the old story and wanting to go down the analytical uh, path of trying to figure things out, right? That is the moment to really come back and say, well, what do I want, right? What do I want? So that's the first thing I wanted to share. The other thing I wanted to share is this idea that 
Once you move into the state, so right, you identify, what do I want? And then what implies that it's true? What implies that I am already this, this one, right? Once you have then moved into your state, the next step in that is being persistent in that state. And specifically what I mean is when the physical world does not provide any confirmation, it provides no evidence that you are in this state, it doesn't show anything that would suggest that yes, it is true, you are now this one. When the physical world provides no evidence, it is so important to not go back to the old state. It's so important to to remain persistent in, no, this is who I am. Like, it doesn't actually matter what the physical world is suggesting. This is who I am, and I'm staying firm in that. And so I recently uh, shared a, just, it was a quote that came to me one day of, do not let the physical world change who you claim yourself to be. Do not let the physical world change who you claim yourself to be. Once you've moved into your ideal state, that's it. You've moved into it. And do not let the physical world kind of bully you into uh, changing, right? It's like, no, I've made my claim. This is who I claim myself to be. And I don't care what the physical world is suggesting. I know who I claim myself to be. And that is what goes, right? And it is through that attitude of boldness and persistence that then the physical world shifts and it rearranges itself to support your claim. So do not let the physical world change who you claim yourself to be. That is the definition of living boldly. So those two things I wanted to share today, the first one is just going straight to what do you want, right? What implies that it is true? What is the feeling like? now that it is true, right? And then the second part is being persistent in your claim. So once you move into your ideal state, do not let the physical world change who you claim yourself to be. So that is all for today. I really, really appreciate all of you so, so much. I appreciate all of your messages, your comments. I know I am not able to respond to all of them, but please know I do appreciate them tremendously. And I just thank you for watching and I will talk to you very soon. Aloha.